Hello friends, welcome to our reading classes. Today we'll read a short story by O. Henry, The Gift of the Magi. Part 1 Jim Mandela lived in New York in a small flat on the top of a high building. Jim was 20 years old, Della was 21. Jim worked very hard, but they were poor because they had to pay the rent for their apartment. Still, they were happy because they loved each other. The next day was Christmas and Della wanted to buy Jim a present. She put her money on the table and counted it. One dollar and eighty-seven cents. That was all. Della counted it three times. One dollar and eighty-seven cents. That's all that she could save for months. And the next day was Christmas. There was nothing to do but fall down on the shabby little couch and cry. So Della did it. Only one dollar and eighty-seven cents to buy a present for Jim. Her Jim. Many happy hours she had spent planning for something nice for him. Something fine and rare, something worthy of the honor of being owned by Jim. Suddenly she turned from the window and stood before the mirror. Her eyes were shining brightly. Quickly she pulled down her hair and let it fall to its full length. Now there were two treasures in which they both took a great pride. One was Jim's gold watch that had been his father's and his grandfather's. The other was Della's beautiful hair. So now her hair fell below her waist like a cascade of brown waters. She did it up again nervously. Then she put on her old brown jacket and an old brown hat. With the shining eyes she ran out of the door and down the stairs to the street. She hurried to Madame Safroni on First Street. The old woman bought hair. Will you buy my hair? Da asked. I buy good hair, said Madame. Take your hat off and let's have a look at it. Down fell the brown cascade. Twenty dollars, said Madame, lifting the hair with a practiced hand. Give it to me quickly, said Della. She sat down and Mrs. Safrony started to work. Della didn't look at her hair on the floor. At three o'clock she took her twenty dollars and put on her hat. The next two hours passed like a happy dream. Della was flying on rosy wings from shop to shop look for Jim's present. At last she found it. It surely had been made for Jim and no one else. It was a platinum chain, simple in design, as all good things should be. As soon as she saw it, she knew that it must be Jim's. Twenty-one dollars they took from her, and she hurried home with eighty-seven cents. Part 2 At home Della got out her curling irons, lighted the gas and went to work. Within 40 minutes her head was covered with little curls that made her look like a schoolboy. She looked at her reflection in the mirror carefully and critically. I hope Jim won't stop loving me with short hair, she said to herself. I did it for him. What? Could I do with one dollar and eighty-seven cents? At seven o'clock coffee was made and the frying pan was ready to cook the chops. Jim was never late. Della sat on the corner of the table near the door with the chain in her hand. When she heard his steps on the stairs, she turned white for a moment. Please, God, make him think I am still pretty, she whispered. The door opened and Jim stepped in. He stopped inside the room and stood still. His eyes were fixed upon Della, and there was an expression in them that she could not read, and it terrified her. It was no anger, no surprise, no horror, no any of the sentiments that she had been prepared for. He simply stared at her with that strange expression on his face. Della jumped off 
and went to him. Jim, darling, she cried, don't look at me that way. I had my hair cut off and sold it because I wanted to give you a present. I just had to do it. My hair grows very fast. Say Merry Christmas, Jim, and let's be happy. Shall I put the chops on? Jim seemed to wake out of his trance. He drew a package from his overcoat pocket and threw it upon the table. Don't make a mistake about me, Dell, he said. There's nothing in the way of a haircut that can make me love my girl less. But if you unwrap the, that package, you will see why I was so shocked when I saw you. Della took off the paper and opened the box. There lay the combs, the set of combs that Della had dreamed of for a long time since she saw them in a Broadway window. Beautiful combs with jewels, just the things to wear in her beautiful vanished hair. She knew that they were expensive combs and now they were hers, but the hair was gone. She hugged them to her bosom, and with tears in her eyes and a smile, she was able to say, My hair grows so fast, Jim. And then she jumped up like a cat and cried, Oh, oh, Jim hasn't yet seen his beautiful present. She held it out for him upon her open palm. Isn't it wonderful, Jim? I haunted all over town to find it. You'll look at the time a hundred times a day now. Give me your watch. I want to see how it looks on it. Instead of obeying, Jim fell down on the couch, put his hands under the back of his head and smiled. Del, said he, let's put our Christmas presents away and keep them for a while. I have sold the watch to get the money to buy your combs. And now let's have chops. Yes, said Della. Let's be happy, darling. Tomorrow is Christmas. Here I have told you the story of two children who unwisely sacrificed for each other the greatest treasures they possessed. But let it be said that of all who give gifts, these two were the wisest. They are the Magi.